cleats are the kind of bike components that we just take for granted. We tend not to think about them and we always expect them to work. But clearly, cleats do wear out. And when they do, you'll either find that you're able to pull your foot out of the pedal when you don't want to, or potentially worse, that your body gets used to the gradually altering position of your shoe in relation to the pedal, meaning that when you do replace them and your position snaps back to the old one, that you may end up getting an injury because of that kind of shock. So when do you replace them? And in fact, how do you make sure that the new cleats are in exactly the same position as the old ones? Well, you will find out. Now I'm gonna use Shimano and Look as my main types of road pedal, but we're also gonna to touch on the speed play as well. Now Shimano and Look are actually quite similar to one another in that they both rely on these big plastic cleats. The points to look at when you are inspecting for wear are the bits of the cleat that actually contact the pedal, and then also the wear on the main body of the cleat itself. Now the first of these affects how securely your shoe is held to the pedal, and then the second one is affects how your shoe sits on the pedal itself. Inspect the contact points at the front and the back of the cleat carefully. Now remove this cleat to make it easier to see. And actually, although it looks completely mangled, the contact points are in relatively good condition. There's a few wear marks on the back, but it is working fine. Now there are no wear lines on this look cleat, nor indeed on Shimano. There are on some, like on this one, but generally speaking, it's open to interpretation. And I will use the cleat until my foot is starting to feel sloppy on the pedal and release is becoming too easy. But the second and perhaps more important thing is, as I've already mentioned, the wear on the body of the cleat itself. What I think is potentially more important though is the cleat platform. So on these Shimano's, that's not the colored bits here. They don't affect how the cleat relates to the pedal at all. They're just for walking on. The cleat platform is this big flat bit here. And as that wears, that will affect how your pedal sits next to the shoe and it can change the whole biomechanics of the system if it does so unevenly. So over time your body gets used to this new position meaning that when you replace the cleats your body gets quite a shock as your position will change meaning that your delicate tendons may end up complaining somewhat. So you need to keep an eye on this bit here and when it shows signs of wear that's when you replace them. What about speed play then? Well, the principle is exactly the same, even if they do look completely different. Keep an eye on the springs, particularly. If they show signs of wear, then you need to replace them. What is a sign of wear? Well, if it's been polished shiny or there are any flat bits, then they'll need to go. Now, speed play recommend that you should probably change them roughly every 3,000 to 5,000 miles or 5,000 to 8,000 kilometers. And we wouldn't want to contradict them, although sometimes those figures can be a little bit conservative but you will know because your foot will feel sloppy on the pedal and release becomes too easy. So you've decided that you need to replace your cleats. What do you do next? Well, whatever you do, don't do anything the night before a big ride or a race. Cleat replacement should be done at the beginning of a fairly light week of riding, giving you your body the time to adjust to the potentially new position. You should also not undo your cleats until you've got the new ones right next to you. What we're aiming to do is replicate the exact position on this shoe, and to do that, we're gonna to need to create a template. My preferred method is to use four pieces of tape to mark key points of the cleat. So one piece resting up against the front of the cleat to measure the fore and aft position. Likewise, one at the back, just to be on the safe side, and then two diagonals there and there and for those we can account for any kind of twist on the cleat just in case there's any ambiguity from the front and the back ones. Then and only then should you remove the old cleat. Then clean the bottom of the shoe, put a dab of grease on the new bolts and then attach the new cleat. You shouldn't have any problem getting it perfectly lined up. Sorted. Now. You should always replace both cleats at the same time, by the way, not just one. And while we're on the subject of cleat fitment, I think we need to say that as a rule, you should ignore the markings on the soles of shoes that you could otherwise use as a guide for cleat placement. Now, of course, if you're just replacing the cleat on the same shoe, then you could use them as a guide. 
but a new model of the same shoe may well be different to your current one. And equally, a left and a right shoe might be marked up differently. And indeed, I wouldn't trust the bolt holes either. So a cool little pro tip if you're gonna be measuring cleat placement onto a new pair of shoes, is you should always measure from the back of the shoe. Now that's because while the sole length may vary, your heel will always sit snugly into that back bit there. I Meaning that this is the fixed point, so you can measure for aft adjustment. Now, if you're fitting cleats for the very first time, then we've got a great video where Dan will take you through the process. You can get through to it by clicking just up there. Or for all our Maintenance Monday videos in one handy place, then you can click through just down there and you get through to that playlist. Finally, before you go to either of those, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, well, you can do it by just clicking on, clicking on my sole. It's not for sale. I wouldn't sell my sole. <laughs>